Kunak Kunchuk. That's Klingon for what it do, beautiful people. Big Drip signed in. Welcome to another edition of the Pop Culture Corner Podcast. My goodness, that's a mouthful. We should probably show you that. Like, Jizzle, how you doing today? Well, I can't say I'm bad, honestly. Things are, you know, it's a new year. Uh, you know what the thing, crazy people thing, think is? Well, that was also a mouthful. Yeah, it was. The crazy <laughs> thing that people think is that just because it's 2021 and a year passed or a day came and went that things were just going to magically clear up and yeah, get better. Yeah. That's not how it goes. Everyone's like, oh, 2021. Uh, it's just 2020 in disguise. Yeah, <laughs> a day passed. Doesn't mean anything. The nun... A zero turned into a one. We're still dealing with bullshit. Yeah, I, so. I, I got a solemn feeling that this is going to be at least a half a decade of nonsense. <laughs> right off rip. I mean, this is more a black label topic that I wanted to bring up. But right off rip, we got riots. We got people invading the Capitol. That's yeah. intense. The yeah. first week. Just yeah, that, real. yeah, that's that's quite something, honestly. Um, we'll but talk I'm, about that at Black Label. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm good though. I'm good. I'm happy to everyone, all of y'all, for for joining us today on this beautiful Sunday. Um, and you know, I, I I'm in good good thoughts. I have a little bit of a situation going on. You know, tight tough times, but uh, producer Jack and Justice, they're always there to help. So. Big trip. Just want to say, I was going to say it, you know, before we started this, but why not say it on it? Uh, so I, I'm, I'm very grateful to have a couple of people in my Ow, life like you that's guys. That's adorable. Because uh, when Stop. faced with tough times, the people in your life, um, you really find out who's there for the right reasons and who's there for the wrong reasons. Yeah, you're going to make me stop. blush. Yeah, yeah. Stop it, you. Yeah. Oh, stop. stop. Cause <laughs> I've been listening to a lot more Joe Rogan lately. Because like, when we first started this, I stopped listening to the podcasts that I like, right? Because mm. I was invested. Yep. But now I'm, you know, I'm working the second job and last yeah, night... Time. Yeah, last night I worked 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. overnight. Night shift. Slept a little and then woke up and... Well, now we're doing this. Look at me, Mr. Krabs. I'm taking out the trash <laughs> at night. <laughs> at night. Um, but no, seriously, like, uh, I'm very humbled. And um, Does it get spooky in there? I feel like it gets spooky in there. Um, it's an no. Amazon warehouse, right? Yeah, but it's like it's like the same as it is at 9 a.m. at 4 a.m. I feel like it would be spooky in there. All the lights are on. There's still 70 people in there. Really? Yeah. Overnight? Oh, yeah. Really? Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. It never stops. Really? Wow. I, I would never imagine overnight would have yeah. that many people working at once. Yeah, and like, uh, shout out to Amazon, because um, I mean, I have my regular job that I do, but it's reduced hours, so I was like, oh, where can I pick up a couple shifts? Amazon has this flex program where you can like pick up your own, like, you basically, like a shift will pop up and you'll be like, oh, do I want that or not? And yeah. And you can pick it or no. Yeah. And it's just like, you do what you can do. Okay. So okay. it that, works. It's very convenient. It just shows how much uh, how much business is going through Amazon, right? Like yeah. When they can just allow you to pick and choose, that means there's never a shortage of shit to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I had more work to do at... 3 a.m. this morning than I did at 8 p.m. on a Friday there. That's insane. You know what I mean? So 3 a.m. in the morning. At 3 a.m., you're getting everything ready for the 5 o'clock delivery. Yeah. But would, at yeah. 7 p.m., you're kind of, or 8 p.m., you're finishing up the last deliveries. Yeah, yeah. So, that makes sense. That makes um, sense. If in order for them to have everything out and about in the morning, overnight actually has a lot to do. That's rare. Because yeah. overnight, overnight's supposed to be... The, the easy, graveyard. yeah. It's supposed to be the easy shift. Nothing going on. You know, you might get spooked once or twice by a ghost or two, but that's about it. As far as work goes, it's not too much to do. Yeah. Always wanted an overnight <clears throat> shift. Yeah, I've always and, wanted um, to do that. So yeah, Black Label should be fun. I got a lot to talk about. I actually. do too. We, um, yeah, Black Label is going to be a, with uh, that whole thing. Make sure you I would check love that to out. get. I would love to get Trump on the show. <laughs> 
And just I, like, look, I would too. After his presidency, give him a couple Xanax, get him on the couch. Get him nice and comfortable, you know. <laughs> get the humidifier going. We turn down the lights, put on some soft jazz. I, I feel like he's a soft jazz kind of guy. Listen, I, I'm, I'm pretty good about this stuff usually. Listen, uh, you know, I, I'm 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 pretty so, much a dickhead. I definitely lost the election, but yeah, I had think, to say I won. Do you think that's what he's going to say to us? No, yeah. no. Yeah. No, I'm a, I know no. I'm a dickhead, but <laughs> no, I thought, I thought no. that's how I played the game. No, no. I should have won that election. I did win that Wait, election. They I won the election us. by crazy numbers. <laughs> Incredible. The biggest numbers <laughs> ever. By far, I don't care what anybody says. He's probably the most interesting man oh, yeah. alive. I he should him. be the Dos Equis guy. He really is the most interesting man on the planet. Listen, I, I love... can listen to him talk all day long. I love Trump, but... I don't love him as a politician. No, he's an entertainer. I think he he's is the funniest. He should not be in charge of a country. Just give him a talk show. Yeah, give no, him a Jerry Springer He would type kill, show. It kill it on a podcast. He would kill it. Oh yeah. Oh god. <laughs> he would See, straight go. murder See, a you podcast. Shouldn't, you shouldn't have said that. Now you're giving him ideas. No, you can't have a podcast. Not without us. Yeah. You need us. He Come would see us. murder a podcast. Imagine if that. Oh Imagine that. We god. got Donald Trump on our payroll working yeah. for the podcast. <laughs> Pop yeah, Coach Corner corrupt. featuring Donald Trump. <laughs> my God. We kill it. Oh my God! I Trump, but again, I want to reiterate what I just said, and because I don't want any confusion. That's basically I, a cast. I love Trump, but not as a leader of a country. I love him because he's entertaining. He is entertaining. Uh, he should not he really be in is. charge of a country or making decisions for many people. <laughs> he is an absolute retard. <laughs> like it's pretty funny when you think about it, though. Yeah, it's it's pretty funny. Yeah, we basically um, been living like a. Like a four-year-long episode of Punked. Yeah, you know what, what if... So Rogan was saying that, like, what if he, like, kind of does what Schwarzenegger did and, like, runs as mayor for the for the time being that he's not in office? Because yep. he can run again in 2024. He can. Um, or 2025 or something like that? Four. And if he goes to, like, California, becomes the mayor... Turns California around, right? Because state's easier to manage than a whole country. Governor. Um, a governor, whatever. And then runs as president again. But like now he's completely turned California into a prospering I think business. I, either way, either way, you were saying mayor when and you were referring to governor, but either way, if he was like may, mayor of a major city as in like New York City, LA, something of the sort. Or he is governor of California, New York, whatever the case. Same difference. Exactly what he just said. It would come out. It was come out exactly the same. And I honestly think he could win mayor of New York City. Now that's a huge job, right? A lot of people like when you think mayor, you don't think that high up on the rank. But it depends on what city you're mayor of. New York City, the mayor of New York City, that's a hefty job. That's a hefty, hefty job. Arguably, I honestly feel like that's worse than being president. When you're president, you have Congress and you have this and you have that. The mayor, he's the final say for everything in New York City. And New York City has a population of like 17 million people. It's yeah. absurd. They've lost a lot as yeah. of recently. Yeah, this is quite a while any, ago. I anyone, heard this number. anyone that had like, say, Two houses, right? They're rich, famous, or whatever. They run a billion dollar company. Anyone who could leave New York left mm. because, you know, it's such a tight packed city. Yes, yeah, disgusting. That it's the last place you want to be. There in Hollywood yeah. or L.A. Yeah, yeah. Those yeah. are the two places yeah. you don't want. to Beverly be right Hills now. is very much like even like L.A. and Beverly oh. Hills are two very different places. My name's not Taylor. Mine is. To, to mad English teachers when I was younger, I was Taylor. <laughs> I was like, I thought you could read. <laughs> Aren't you, uh, you're supposed to be the English teacher. I thought you majored in English. <laughs> you can't, there's an A there, but that's okay. I, but, I don't think I've had a teacher get my name right. But yeah, um, so save that, save that, save that. Save this mm. talk. Um, Make sure you tune in for Black Label because apparently we got a lot. Yeah, I, I've been digging some things in. Yeah, I got a couple. I got a couple. Yo, people are crazy. Yeah, she got wild. Stuff got wild. Stuff got wild. Things um, got wild. But yeah, so, I mean, listen, lots of stuff going on. Um, they show got, you tune in to Black Label is basically 
No, no, no. I'm saying for like I'm transitioning now. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that was a transition. <laughs> yeah, that was a transition. <laughs> Seamless, uh, if I do say so myself. Lots of stuff going on around here. Uh, my girl Grace Randolph, right? So, my girl Grace Randolph, I hate you with a passion. Um, she, so she, so she started this whole thing off, and she had tweeted out that Oak. Uh, Andy Muschietti, which is the director of the Flashpoint movie. Okay. Um, oh, he is heading the search for a new cyborg to recast Cyborg in Flashpoint because Ray Fisher had said that I don't want to be in any project associated with Walter Amada. Um, so Grace made up a story and she said that Andy Muschietti is looking for a new cyborg so that they can recast and move on from Ray Fisher. Um, that's not true. None of it's true. Okay. People like light cast fire back at her. And this is all the day after this is the literally the day after the whole Michael Keaton replacing Affleck thing happened. So people are still like aggravated about fake news and pop culture. Cause, um, our show was one of the only ones that were saying, well, us light cast, I think Film Junkie and a couple of other ones were the only ones saying that Affleck wasn't being replaced by Keaton. And then we were proved right when the author of the, the article that everyone was quoting said, that's not what I meant. Yeah. So we were like one of six people, six and I jumped shows. to conclusions. Yeah. yeah. We, were, we were one of six shows the whole day saying, yo, y'all, y'all, y'all pump taking this out of context. Yeah, just pump the brakes. Relax. Breaks. Wait for DC Films to say something yeah i don't i don't take a piece of news until it comes from the more the mouth of the source yeah or i like to dub it the mouth of the mouse yes um so you know we were right about that and i'm not like saying oh we were right it was just that we didn't jump to anything and uh we were proved right when the author came out but the next day grace tweets that out and says basically ray fisher's done uh, and you know he'll be recast. Everyone was like, "What are you talking about?" We don't know for sure yet. No, no, no. Uh, I have gonna the tweets be in right Flashpoint. here. Um. So basically, if so, Ray Fisher tweeted this: If W Picture W B Pictures has made the decision to remove me from the Flash rather than address in any way Walter Hamada tampering with the JL investigation, that's on them. The idea of removing the role rather than recasting it is only being used to try to avoid public backlash. Wait. Um, and then there's another one. There's the one that he says, I officially haven't done that. Oh, my team and I are still in deep comfort. What the hell? That was the wrong one. Whatever. He, <laughs> Ray Fisher said, I didn't step down from anything. I don't know what you're talking about. So I didn't. has Ray confirmed that he's already filmed for Flashpoint? Yes. Everything Whether they remove him is shot. it okay. is a different uh, okay. story. All right. I um, highly doubt that's going to happen. You already have it filmed, recorded, ready to go. They Why might. get rid of it? They might. Why? Be, and because. then try to recast, redo, or just dump it all together. Cyborg's a huge part of Flashpoint, so you can't just get rid of them. And recasting and reshooting is going to cost you a, a, a lot of money. I almost cussed again, but I caught myself. It's going to cost you a pretty penny to recast and reshoot and re-everything. So might as well keep using You And you can't scrap Cyborg from Flashpoint. He's too big of a part of the story. It, it wouldn't be Flashpoint if Cyborg wasn't a part of it. So you use Ray Fisher. It's a logical conclusion. You use yeah. what you already have filmed and shot. But check this out. So everyone called Grace out and was like, what are you talking about? Like, where'd you get this? She was like, I have two sources that told me this. Uh, uh, uh. Her source is this brick wall. Like, I, I don't know who would tell her anything or anything of significance. Uh, but she like she does this thing with her channel where she's like, she'll start off her show and she'll be like, I was the first to report this. Don't you remember back in May? I was the first. And she like rubs it in their faces a little bit real quick. Like, oh, remember that I reported this first? Um, it was like, oh, you reported a lie first? Well, good. Um, but then she retracted her statement by saying, I wouldn't be surprised if they wrote 
Cyborg out of Flashpoint at this point, which basically I would. contradicts what she had said, that the Flashpoint director was looking for a new Cyborg actively. And then at the end of the day, she said, they're probably going to write Cyborg out of the movie. That contradicts. So you basically, you're just covering your, your behind so that when <laughs> you're wrong, no one can say anything. You're a, you're a disgrace. And uh, I, uh, uh, her name's Grace. Uh, <laughs> oh, buzzing. Yeah. And I'm not, you know what? I don't care that you're a woman. I don't care about anything. I think women are awesome. But you as a human being, you suck. Um, and you're a fake, fake, fake journalist. Let's, let's just go off of the most recent, right? Because uh, that's where she's at right now. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised if they ran him out of the movie. I would. Do you know Flashpoint? Because I would. Cyborg, again, big part of Flashpoint, major character in the story. To write him out of it makes no sense. You really don't have, like, I guess if they're making Flashpoint the same way. Okay, so I keep, I compare Civil War and Flashpoint, right, between the two. Civil War, MCU Civil War is Civil War within the Marvel Cinematic Universe, right? It really has little to nothing to do with the comic run. And it must guessing flashpoint is going to be the same meaning the flashpoint we get is not going to be the story we already know but a flashpoint story that fits within the confines of the dceu if that makes sense right so in that that scenario yeah fine you can cut out cyborg but if you're going with flashpoint the actual story you need him so i guess it really depends on what they're doing with this movie and i know little to nothing of what's going on in this movie. Yeah. Everything I know is rumor for the most part. And there's another thing with Ray Fisher, and I just want to finish it off with this, is that the Y, I think it was the rap and the wire, no, the, the rap in Variety wrote articles saying that Ray Fisher had claimed that WB had parted ways with Jeff Johns and Joss Whedon. The Joss Whedon one, 100%. You got that. Um, but Jeff Johns mm. is still technically working with WP. What Ray Fisher actually said was um, WB has parted ways with Joss Whedon and Jeff Johns will follow suit. What follow suit means is it will happen. It might not happen right now, but it's going to happen. Eventually. So yeah. they misquoted him and ran the article. And now he's asking, here, I got it up here. I strongly suggest that the rap amend this article immediately. While I appreciate the reporter's undying desire to do Warner Brothers and Walter Hamada's bidding, it is factually inaccurate. I did not publicly step down from anything. That's the one I was looking for. Mm. Um, and then I strongly suggest that the rap. Oh, yeah, so is for. Yep, so is both. Um, but basically, he's saying. That if Warner Brothers removes him, that's a different story. But he never publicly stepped down. Or, um, oh, well, is that not a step down? I'm sorry, but is that not? I I refuse to work if the, Walter, whatever his last name, has well, anything no. to do with it. Does that not count as a step down? Because it, it sounds like a step down to me. No, because if any, if if the Snyder Cut and like future Justice League projects. Anything else that has to do with HBO Max, Walter Hamada has no say in that. Okay. Well, he kind of, he's not the big boss. Like, Jason Kylar is the big boss. So, okay. Walter Hamada is just the head of DC Films. But if, you're, if it's on HBO Max, it's not technically a film. Okay. So, um, okay. They, you, could, you could go either way. Okay. But Walter Hamada just renewed himself as head of DC Films through 2023. Okay. So, and... Ray Fisher works within DC Films, not HBO Max. Yeah, but it's still not a public step. Like, to say I step down yeah. is yeah. I will not play Cyborg anymore. Fair enough. It, um, it just sounds... It does. But, um, yeah, it's really... This is getting really... Convoluted. Very... There's a lot. Yeah. A lot going on. And honestly, I've said it before that I don't know if Warner Brothers could work with him anymore. Just right. Simply, yeah. Simply due to like, if you keep him around, like you're just you're kind of admitting that he's right. But if you get rid of him, you kind of look like the bad guy. So it's like the better option is to get rid of 
Yeah, you cause I don't know. too much hoopla. Yeah, way too much hoopla. It's right? really like, a. It's really an interesting. Now I have no idea what went on behind the scenes, right? But I'm guessing Ray Fisher never tried to solve this off camera or off. No, he definitely did. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I don't see it that way. I see it as he immediately jumped to Twitter, and it's this. Now it's this big, once again, hoopla, and that's not good for any business, right? You might look kind of shady, but no, because you already parted ways with Josh Whedon the main issue, quote unquote, right? The main problem. And then you, you claim Jeff Johns is following. So you get Ray, Ray Fisher out as well, right? All parties included, right? Cause, and not only that, like it, if it was just the Josh Whedon, Jeff Johns thing, all right, fine. But then Ray comes out with, now it's, oh, I won't work with Walter either because he's an enabler. Now you've taken it a step too far. Now we won't work with you. Now all of you can go. We don't need any of you. We'll be fine without you. You see what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. And like people, and I get what you're saying because I, uh, and I somewhat agree. Like I stand with Ray Fisher. Like no one should, if it's all true, no one should be treated like that. Again, it happens, right? Uh, we live in a world where, you know, you. Not everything's hunky dory. Also. Yeah, it, sorry, it's hard to say, but you're right. It's not hunky dory, but no one really should have to deal with it. But it's still a part of life. It sucks. It's reality, um, and, and the only way you change it is by educating and and like raising your kids to respect everyone equally, and that's gonna take some time. So it's not a problem you can solve overnight. It's one that solve over time, and um, you know, with the whole thing, it's like. Uh, at this point, any other studio would just cut ties with everybody and be yeah. like, "All right, bet. I'm good. See you later. Sorry that it didn't work out, um, but this is too much at this point." Like, look at Johnny Depp. He didn't even do anything wrong on set. Yep. He divorced his wife and maybe some had some issues. Yep. And Warner Brothers was like, "Nah." Immediately stepped away. My point exactly. My point exactly. But because Ray has his grubby little finger pointing at them at the Ooh, moment, like grubby. make a make a move. I dare you. Yes, I'm. Re- yes, grubby. Make a move. I dare you. Make a move. Right now they have to. Now their backs kind of against the wall, and they have to move ever so accordingly. Right with with um with Amber and Johnny. It was just bye. We don't. We're not dealing with this. We'll see you later. And I think that's the logical con- conclusion on a business standpoint, right? If we're talking morals or whatever you want to label it, all right, fine. We go with a different route. But at the end of the day, these people are a business. They stand to make money. That's the whole point. That's not profitable. Feel mm. me? Yeah. It's a uh, messy situation at this yes, point. Yes, it is. And oh, but haha. Uh, WandaVision coming oh. next Friday and it's going to start off with all right I'm sorry but it's two so they're going to release two episodes on Friday but they're only 30 minutes each that's okay that's so a that's, whole hour of content baby let's yeah, go but, just basically one episode yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> So Are they going to be our line from I, here on out? Listen, up? I've heard a couple different things. I don't um, know. I've heard that most of them are 45 to an hour, okay. but there's a couple 30 minutes. Technically, that could still be the case because Mandalorian the first- was the same, right? couple of 45s, couple of uh, closer to a half hour. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but Mandalorian was really like a certain – like Mandalorian was a risk. Okay. WandaVision, you okay. know, is going to murder. Yeah, okay. Like, you yeah, know yeah. it's going to murder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It's an MCU show. Yeah. People show up in I'm the hyped. droves yeah, I'm hyped. to the theaters to see these movies. Uh, you don't even have to worry at all. Uh, I, and I, I hope that there's more hour episodes. So what I heard was we'll get a couple 30-minute episodes and then mostly towards the hour mark. Those first couple 30 minutes could be this scenario right they want to the first two episodes of 30 minutes hit you at the same time with them that's an hour and then from here on out it'll be an yeah. hour or they're all 30 minutes and i'll be upset i'm happy i hate 30 minute episodes i'm happy with 30 to 45 i got a I lot going it. on right now i got a lot to watch so i'm i'm okay with it honestly i got a, i'm not i got a, i got quite a bit going on so to try to juggle in all of this and now throwing one division into the mix it's a lot going on so I, i'm cool with a half hour to 45 i'm we're, excited i just can't wait to see the show yeah um, right now we're working on 
something um, to figure out how we're going to handle WandaVision, mm. uh, whether we'll team up for TV corner. Yeah, or it seems the most likely because I, I feel like there's going to be a solid amount to talk to, talk about with this show. Yeah, and, and instead of because I already do, a, I already pick a TV show and just like yeah, pu- purely focus on it, and all my TV shows are over at this point. Okay, so Perfect it timing. only makes sense. Perfect timing. For WandaVision to be the next one, yeah. But I don't want to do it alone because that's yeah. selfish. And it so we it makes sense to put it on his uh, little T V T T Y T V time. Another mouthful, <laughs> Jeez Louise. T V time is during this episode. T V corner. Is, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I oh, had to oh, differentiate oh. the two. <laughs> so T V corner. This is the first show worthy of Ty's T V corner that we both watch. Yeah. So. Like every other show he's done, I don't watch. I I, I spend all my time and that's playing why video games I separated and watching anime. Yeah, exactly. Because I'm a nerd. Well, I separated it because you don't watch them, but I still wanted to do it. Yeah. But I didn't want to do it like on here while there's you're sitting there just like. <laughs> but there's a lot. Well, I mean, I do that. I mean, in all fairness. Yeah, I but do I that do other you. things. I, you know, I'm getting other things ready. In but that's fairness. okay. <laughs> and I got quite a bit for anime in our key today, so you're going to have a lot of stealing staring to do yeah so we're gonna change up the format this week because we we're gonna do the regular show it'll probably last like an hour and 10 minutes uh no just kidding yeah just kidding yeah hour and a half but okay so what he's referring to if if you're familiar last you watched last week was our part one of our green lantern spotlight this is part two and uh as the week went on and we were doing our research came to the conclusion that we're working with a lot there's there's a lot of content here there's a lot of information a lot going on if we threw it it into this episode with everything else it would become like ridiculously long so we're going to separately record spotlight i don't know how the upload will work yet we'll get to you as soon as we know how that's going to go down but there's a lot for Spotlight, um, in other words. I, I know how it will work. Okay, he knows how it works. Yeah. I don't know how it works. So <laughs> I'll, I'll just upload it. So the episode and Spotlight will come out at the same time, and they'll technically be the same episode, but Spotlight will be its own video. Okay, so uh, yeah, okay. So, all right, so we are on the same But I, I kind of like that because, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I kind of chapter the episodes anyway, yep. but... Now, if you just want to do the Green Lantern thing, yep. boom, and yeah, if we And we stay on point with Spotlight and we keep picking content-worthy topics, this could be a regular thing. Yeah. Because, could, again, there was a lot coming out of the, this yeah. particular And then topic. it kind of separates the podcast mm. from something, which I don't mind. That's why um, we put the name Spotlight on it. Yeah. Because it's supposed to be special, right? Yeah. All right. So, uh, and th- that you know, that's what I have for now for, like, a little banter. So, uh, you know what we can do? Get into gaming. We can getting into gaming. Bum 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 bum. What? I got that. I like that. I all I can think of is that little uh, the intro now. Oh. Oh. Uh, oh I don't. I, yeah. I can't beatbox that. I can't either. We should. Oh, we should. Yo, we should hire, hire Biz Marquee for the show. I know he doesn't have work right now. <laughs> I know he's not working right now. Oh, I would love it. Oh. I, <laughs> But yeah, so... <laughs> Send me your resume. <laughs> let's get into gaming. Mm. This week, I'm getting epic. Oh, oh, I'm, I forgot. So, okay. So, I, guys, I forgot to mention. Not my Math was not my greatest, nor was it my worst. But I do believe we're at week 20 at this point. Holy fuck. Wow. It's 22. 20. <laughs> I knew he... <laughs> Son of a bitch. I knew that was going to happen. Word I did. Word I did. I knew that was going to Episode happen. 22. After a tragic Healy accident, Big Drip was gifted the, the power of telling the future. <laughs> so, <laughs> this week, for getting into gaming, I'm going to cover Ragnarok, God of War, and what I have affectionately named God of War's Nordic run, because they're basing uh, each little series off of different mythologies. Now, this is made by Monica, oh, excuse me, Santa Monica Studios, which is owned by Stony. Sony distributes it. It's Sony's, right? It's supposed to release sometime this year. We don't have like a specific yet. My guess will be late summer, early fall, I'm guessing. Now this is now okay. In fair warning, just understand I am still currently playing the first one. So if anything I give you is just a tap it off 
or it's you know a little dragged on it's just because i'm still playing the first one please don't shoot me please don't hurt me i'm sorry now that the speculation is ragnarok will take place three years after the ending of the first game now the first game takes place just before what is known as the great winter that roughly lasts about three years so ragnarok should pick up at the end of said great winter or just after it ended now this would be cool to see because it's been three years real time so i would very much like if that's where we picked up in the game so we're kind of you know we're on the same page here right same by the time went by we kind of makes it easier to put yourself immerse yourself if you will you know so I'm, I'm i'm hoping that's the case now again i'm still playing the first one but throughout the game it is said that it's heavily implied that thor will be our next main antagonist which makes sense again this is the nordic run thor's the god of thunder big bad in nordic mythology so and that, you know, all of us, we are, damn near everybody played the original three God of War, right? Back in the day, we were kids, button, button mashing the whole nine. So I think it's fair to assume, yeah, yes, in fact, Thor will be our main antagonist, or one can only hope. Now, the game director of the first one, what's my, what's my man's name? Corey Barlog. Now, he had a quick interview, uh, he was just talking, and this is more around the time the release of the original, but... He was quoted as saying that the plan is to have five games in this Nordic run. Now, the likelihood of that, I would say, is slim to none. Just because, so, they, they were asked, okay, you want to make five, Corey was asked, you want to make five games, right? But it, how long is this going to take? This is going to be a 15 to 25, this is going to be a life sentence by the time we get all of these games or what? Because the first one took about four to five years to make. Now, Corey said... And I'm just kind of rough quoting here, but he said it was because they started anew, right? God of War, anybody who played the original trilogy and who is playing currently, you know, you know, it, it's a completely different game. I mean, everything has changed. The combat, the, the, the look, the style, everything, right? It's RPG elements, the whole nine. Everything's changed. And he said that was the main reason that it took as long as it did. Now, now that they have their core set up, their foundation, if you will, the next couple of installments shouldn't take as long but the original release and ragnarok we're talking three years in between so the likelihood of five games just seems slim to me right that we haven't even got our second installment yet we're already talking about three more games i just i don't see that happening but i'm not i'm not you know omnipotent in this we'll see um yeah, I, it's it's Ragnarok. What can I say? It's God of War, right? I'm still, like I said, I'm still in the middle of playing this game, but it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's 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 immersive. It's 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 it's. I, if you haven't played it yet, I highly suggest it. Go buy it. I paid like fifteen dollars for it on the PlayStation Store. So you go check that bad boy out and uh, keep your eyes peeled. Now I'm I'm gonna give you uh, a specific guess. I'm gonna go with September seventh, twenty twenty one. Now I'm on camera. Remember that. Make sure you check out for that and let me know if I was right. Follow me on Twitter, Drip Big. Must. Told him to follow me on Twitter and let me drip know if I was right. Big? Yeah, I don't know why. I, I made it Big Drip, but Twitter, my at is Drip Big. And I don't know how to change it. So that's the case right now. Find me on Twitter. <laughs> oh, my God. Make sure you check out for that bad boy and let me know if I was right. Yeah. Is that all for that? Yeah, yeah. I oh. just want to cover that one game. Okay, and that was getting into games. Um, guess what time it is? What time is it? It's time for some TV. It's time. <laughs> it's time for some TV. I know yeah. I already got into it, but we, we, should, we really need like a sound effect of buttons. Yeah. So you can get that. Remember that dial tone? That you change the channel, right? I put it in. Oh, you did. Cool. <laughs> See, he doesn't watch I, anything no. that I do. No, because I'm always working on it for the next episode. Yeah, I watch it. Jack watches it. You should watch it. I put a lot of work into that. Um, but Loki season two has already been confirmed. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Loki season wow. two already. I mean, confirmed. that's fair though. That's fair. It's gonna yeah. be a good show. Nobody's gonna dislike it. That's um, it's reported the game development at Marvel Studios with season one's release date still to be determined however that trailer was fantastic i loved it i did too um, i did too i'm still kind of confused as to what the story will be but i don't care i'm gonna be there i'm gonna watch it i'm yeah. excited for it um and and like a little tie into that this is not technically tv but the the guy that's 
writing and directing Loki is actually going to work with Kevin Feige on the Star Wars film that they're doing. Ah, ah. So Kevin Feige is doing producing a Star Wars movie, which... Interesting. That's Interesting. what we need. That's crazy. That's what we Kevin, need. Kevin, man, pump the brakes, guy. Can you save something for the rest of us? My God. <laughs> My goodness. Just dips his toes into everything. Yeah. Which, uh, do you know which film specifically? No. No? But, um, that would be interesting. It's going to be the, one of their bigger films. Yeah, one of their more a, important, you know? Yeah. Um, but the the Loki writer is Michael Waldron. And uh, so Kevin Feige, Star Wars films. St- Kevin Feige's Star Wars film taps Marvel Studios' Loki writer, Michael Waldron, for the Lucasfilm installment. So that's interesting. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, me that's, too. That's good news. Yeah. And then, so Marvel has a show out on Disney Plus right now. Yeah, uh, Legends. Legends. Yeah. And they yeah. dropped the first episode yesterday. I haven't watched it yet. No, nor have I. But as soon as we wrap up tonight, right on that. I had to sleep at some point uh, this morning. So. Refresh me on what Le- Legends is. It could, uh, to my knowledge, so, isn't it uh, behind the scenes kind of things? No. No? No, no, no. So each episode... They like go to a specific epic moment in each character okay. or in like certain characters. Like, I don't know how. Let me find it here because someone had sent it to me and it had like the description in it. But basically, what it is is like they take, like, say that moment where Cap and Tony are fighting and it's slow-mos with the shield Mm -hmm. and like the blaster from Mm -hmm. Iron Man and it's like that scene from the comic book cover Mm -hmm. like they'll go in and like they'll talk to you about that scene and go into depth maybe a little bit behind the scenes but it's not necessarily behind the scenes you're talking about that moment in the movie it was it was just that was just my best that was the best choice of words I had at the time but we are okay I, I it was what I thought it was oh it's I, the first two episodes of Marvel Studios Legends to uh, are on Disney plus right now okay. and it revisits some of the most iconic moments from the MCU one character at a time okay all right okay yeah so I can almost guarantee there'll be a Tony and Steve episode yeah um, absolutely so there's absolutely, I, you yeah. have we have Hulk Wanda. Black Panther, Cap, Iron Man, Thor, uh, Scarlet Witch, Vision, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange. I mean, there's not going to be that many episodes. They might double up. So, I probably... Well, eh, there might be. There might be. And then they have their their big movies to cover. Civil War, Avengers. They, yeah, it might go like that. Yeah. There might be I, a lot of episodes to this. But I, I can already recommend that you... That you tune into that. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd love like that behind the scenes. They, they have some of the best visuals. Like some of the best. Uh, okay, visuals isn't the best word, but they have some of the best. Because a, a lot of complaints I hear with the MCU is they're pretty bland. They they kind of keep it safe. That's a common uh, complaint I hear. I personally don't mind it, but they're so visuals isn't the best word. But some of their scenes, like the scene he just described, with it's straight out of the comics. Cap holding the shield. Tony Bla- repulsor blasters. That that's you know that that's a beautiful shot right there. That's I love that. I live for that. Or 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 homecoming. That classic scene of Peter. Uh, the the first time we really see Peter Parker's willpower, and he has all the rubble on him, and he's oh come on Spider Man, come on Spider Man. Remember that scene? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That gorgeous scene. Things um, of that sort. But what was I saying? I would love. We were talking about legends. I would love to see that in legends. Them cover that specific scene in Homecoming because oh, okay. I, I love that scene. Okay. Um, you want to hear a fun fact? Fun facts. Do you want to hear a fun fact? Fun facts. Bad Boys Three. Well, Bad Boys for Life was the highest grossing movie of 2020 box. Office. Yeah. No, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's how bland yeah. 2020 was. Yeah. Well, that's I heard that was a great boys. movie. It was. I, I awesome. It was <laughs> I but it, it shouldn't great. be the highest no, no. grossing movie at no, the 2020 but, box office. Well, it's because MCU didn't release anything. Yeah. If they did, that. But that can you imagine that? In a world we live in right now, Bad Boys for Life, highest movie at the box office. That's something office, that would happen in like 92. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's not a 2020 kind of... That's not a modern day box office. Oh, by the way, how was... Um, are you guys, I'm, I'm assuming you guys watched, but... 
Did you have fun uh, interviewing Christopher Mann? I did. You, guys, like you had a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys go check that out. He's a cool dude. Uh, we did a uh, quick dip this week. It was me and Jack, and we inter- interviewed Christopher Mann. He's uh, been in Hollywood for quite some time, longer than I've been alive. This man's been in countless movies, um, TV shows, The Wire, most notably The Wire, Law and Order, SVU, um, a film on Netflix called Loving. It's a great film. You should go check that out. A really in-depth drama. It's a great film. Uh yeah, and I had a really good time. Me and Jack really enjoyed it. This week's Quick Dip, you go check that out. That's up right now on the YouTube page. Yeah, it was um, it was weird for me to like edit it because like it was different. Like, because when I edit our show and or anything else, like I already know what's gonna happen, so I'm ready for it. But for this, ah, I was like, I ah. it was like I was watching it for the first time. Ah, yes. And, but I was like entertained, so I would like catch myself just watching it, yeah, and like not editing it, yeah. And then I have to go all the way back. back and, like, oh, yeah, I forgot yeah it was it. actually, it was actually really. I, I it was, was a good proud, episode. I was proud of you guys. Yeah, no, it was a great episode. Chris is a really um, cool dude. I like him. Yeah. So, TV, not a lot for TV. Uh, His Dark Materials just ended. Vikings. Um, I, I talked about this last week. They're in their final season. Um, and that's that's honestly about it. Oh, look at that's that. That's crazy, right? Quick TV day. But I have what? a couple more things for movies, but we'll get into that after. My turn? Anime! Oh, All right. All right. Anarchy. All right. All right. This episode's going quick. Listen, guys. I, I want to I wanna be... This episode's going quick. No, no. This is going to take me a minute. So I want to be honest with you guys. I have been dreading this. Okay, so the Anime Anarchy, I'm covering Attack on Titan's final season, right? Now the plan was to do episodes two and three. Two gave me a lot more than I thought it was gonna, so I'm just covering two this week. A lot Um. went down, uh, and honestly, like genuinely, I wrote everything down, every point I would have covered, whatever. And I don't know why I've just been so nervous about this and about messing this up because there was a lot there. There was a lot to unpack, and I hope I didn't miss anything. I hope I don't skip any beats. Again, there was a lot going on in this episode. Now, I was wrong. Last week, I, I stated that where we're currently at, they're showing us a past event known as the Great Titan War. I was wrong. We are in modern day, and we're just looking at the enemies, quote, enemy point of view it's almost uh compared to flags of our fathers and letters of Iwo Jima, right like that same battle different perspective right so now we're getting a feel for characters we already know right but we've known them up until this point as well not up to this point but up until season three these people have been allies right they they grew up with our main characters fought alongside them etc later to be revealed that they are working for the enemy they are spies now we're getting to see reiner in particular this episode is really based solely around reiner and we're getting a feel for what his life actually is outside of paradise island right with our main characters right because he it's always been made abundantly clear that reiner has this ongoing conflict in his head now the belief is that he's doing the right thing, right? He's being brainwashed, essentially, by his country. That he's doing the right thing by spying on these people and trying to destroy them from the inside out. But because he spent a collective, I believe it was like five years, he, the conflict begin, begins to uh, begins to manifest, right? He's starting to build connections with these people that he's sent there to destroy, right? And he's not alone. He's there with Berthold, uh, and he's somewhere else. Ymir's over here. There's a bunch of them. They're spread out, but it's it's really Reiner and Berthold that are together most of the time. And Reiner's starting to build a connection with these people. So we start to see where that conflict comes from. Because back home, on back his actual home is where all his fa- family is, his friends, his allies, everything. So you start to feel combat- compassion for some of our antagonists with throughout this show. And I've always loved that about Attack on Titan. They always have this... This real emotional connection, right? They've always been good at putting real human feeling into fantasy world, you know? And I've always loved that, and they've always been good about that. Um, We're getting some inside look of the war itself and combat. So, the Marleans are fighting... The country of Marley is fighting an actual war 
as well as invading Paradise Island, where our main characters are. So they're basically fighting two armies, but they have the power of the Titans at their hand. Now, this is revealed to us at the end of Season 3, that this country of Marley is the reason that Titans are there in the first place, and they keep sending them there to keep our main characters and everybody else on Paradise Island. So we, we've come to realize that the, our main characters have managed to fight their way through and reach the beach. Now they're trying to head to Ocean and go to Marley Island, but they still have to deal with other characters from Marley Island that are trying to keep them a bay. Now, for the sake of context, so you just kind of get what I'm talking about here. The country of Marley has been re revealed to us where the Titans are coming from, our main antagonists. And what that is, is it's breaking up into two, Marleyans and Aldeans. Excuse me if I'm pronouncing that wrong, I probably am. But... The Eldians are the low down, no good, dirty swine, right? They're, they're the, the bottom of the barrel. They're the foot soldiers. They're the human shields. Well, the Marleans live in comfy, cozy lives doing essentially whatever they want. Now, the Eldians on the island, on Paradise Island, they're also Eldians. They're the, supposed to be the worst of the worst, right? They were exiled and they were sent there. It's a essentially a death sentence it's like getting sent to alcatraz right it's a death sentence but instead you're gonna be eaten by giant cannibals that look like your friends and family so that's always fun <laughs> uh, shit gets dark real quick stuff gets dark stuff gets dark sorry <laughs> real quick to boast just a quick i wanted to now this is before we were recording so you probably don't believe me but i was right when when we first met zeki the beast titan he he goes to Aaron right before he leaves. They lose the battle, but they survive and they retreat. And he says to Aaron, don't worry, I'll come back for you. And I thought to myself, after we got some flashback scenes, I was like, Zeki is Aaron's older brother. I don't know, his older half-brother. I have a feeling of this. Sure as, uh, what, sure as rice? Sure as rain? Sure as, I'm going to go with rice. Sure as rice. That's not it. Yeah, I know, but I can't cuss. Sure as, oh. Yeah. I get uh, it now. Oh, no, no. Right is rain. Sure as Right, right rain, it is yeah. rain. Zeki is, in fact, Eren's older brother that betrayed their father, Grisha Jaeger, and is the reason he was exiled in the first place and the reason Eren was even born to begin with. Now, to the unbeknownst to the Marleans, Grisha had the injection for the founding titan, which the Marleans need. Hence, this is our whole story. The Marleans need that founding titan back to win the war they're actually fighting. Okay. Again, I know this is a lot, and if you're lost, it's because we're four seasons into a show already. You should go check that bad boy out. So, again... Oh. La, 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 la. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Like I said, there's a lot going on this week. Oh, look at that. Is that bad? No, I went... La, 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 la. Oh. And it did like a... Oh, oh. Light Drizzle got some vocals on him. Yes, I do. <laughs> so, again... So, all right. So... Again, if you're lost, go check out this show. We're four seasons in already. Like I said before, things get dark. Things get real. It's, it's like I said, we're in, we're in the middle of showing combat and war on the Marleyan side of things where they, they utilize and fight with Titans. And I've always had appreciation for shows that, you know, they have these, like, these powerful beings, i.e. Titans, or even Michael Bay did this, Transformers, things mm. of that sort. But humans and our technology are still a threat, right? We still have a fighting chance. I've always hated fantasy where it's like humans just have no fighting chance, right? Like we're completely helpless without the help of superheroes or, or Dragon Ball characters or whatever the case is. Right. You know what I'm saying? Attack on Titan isn't like that. They make it abundantly clear that we can't do this without the founding Titans, i.e. Eren. We need him. Or we can't win this war because they're going to start dropping bombs on us and our Titans aren't going to be enough. We need the Founding Titan. So that's really what's going on right now. This is only episode two, people. And we're, I'm, I'm filled to the brim with questions and answers. And that's really what's great about this show. And I can't recommend it enough. They really keep you on your toes. Just when you think you have the answer, boom, they hit you with something else and you forgot that you forgot about. You didn't even remember. Oh, snap, that's still going on. What's the answer to that, right? They keep you in and... How they wrap this whole story together is going to be a beauty to see. So I really suggest you check this out before it's too late. Get on Crunchyroll. Uh, they have a couple of seasons on Netflix, I believe. They only have one through three, though. They don't have the current fourth season. So you need Crunchyroll or Funimation for that. But Funimation can suck speaking, my butt cheeks. So speaking of Crunchyroll, Crunchyroll, 
Go they ahead. just got bought, I heard. Yeah, I think so. Funimation yeah. bought them. Yeah, which yeah. is... What do you mean? Yep. I believe so. So Funimation... I believe so. ...is a bad one, right? Yeah, Funimation sucks. I hate them. But Funimation sucks the same way EA sucks or the same way... Um, uh, oh, what's so up? That's what's a, a third... A I said, who studio. bought... Yeah. Who bought... Crunchyroll. Crunchyroll's the third one. It's because they're listening to us. That's why. Otter Media, the folks who do the whole Crunchyroll thing... You know what the streaming anime? Okay, well, uh, that's not what I'm looking for. What? They, no, they were acquired by AT and T. Sony's Funimation buys Crunchyroll. Yeah, okay, I was right. It's Funimation. I was right. It's Funimation. Funimation sucks the same. Funimation rate. is by Sony. I didn't know that, but yeah, I guess so. I didn't know that. Wow. I guess so. I didn't know Fun- Sony owned Funimation. But that's not a good thing. Funimation again, it sucks for the same reason EA sucks and the same 1. reason like uh billion. What's a what's a movie studio that sucks ass in that same similar way? I guess you could say Sony. Well, Sony. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, <laughs> Sony's actually a solid answer. Sony is a solid answer. They do suck like that. And in a way it's like this, they're real heavy to like throw copyrights at people like us or they're real quick to try to sue or just and they put out mediocre to bad content. It's just Funimation isn't cool. Crunchyroll was cool because not only did they have full seasons and current seasons of shows we already love, but they had dope originals too, right? The God of High School is one of the dopest animes I've seen in a while. It's a solid show, Crunchyroll original. AT&T and Warner Media agreed to sell, so they owned it. Wow, I didn't and they know that. Sold it wow. to Funimation. AT and T owned Crunchyroll. That's crazy. See, I wouldn't have got rid of that. Crunchyroll's on HBO Max. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. Wow, I, look at that. That's I, crazy. I had said that to you earlier in the in our podcast uh, earlier episode. I said, did does it being on HBO have anything to do with them being owned by H Warner Brothers? You said no. I had no idea at know. the time. I had so, no yeah, idea. So yeah, they the time. were in fact owned. Look at that. By AT and T, and why would why would they get rid of that? I don't know because I I know for a fact Crunchyroll has plenty of subscribers. If you're selling something for 1.2 billion dollars, there's money in it. There's money in it. Why would you sell that to Sony? I guess Warner Brothers just doesn't care about anime. It it must be as simple as that. They just don't care about anime, right? Uh, Sony's a Japanese country. I mean, company. Excuse me. (laughs) Sony, (laughs) the country. They're they're a Japanese company. So, yeah. All right. We're going to give them the anime. Let them deal with it. We don't want it. Yeah. Yeah, We can make 1.2 million. The Crunchyroll team has done, like, an extraordinary job of not only growing, like, Crunchyroll, the brand, but also building like a large, large anime fan base. Yeah, they do. Um, yeah. A passionate community. Again, if you will. They, they again they have all of our favorite shows in full, full. Um, you know, if the show's already finished, then they have every season. Or if the show's ongoing, they have the current running season. Yeah, it's excellent for that. And then again, they have some dope originals. It, again, got a high school. I think I couldn't suggest it more. Get you some Crunchyroll, baby. Yeah, and I think the, I think. Crunchyroll's success is like a direct correlation to like the company's um, commitment. Their like atmosphere. It's like very down to earth, and like anime fans go there because they know all their favorite stuff might be there. Like it's not like HBO Max where you go there and like it's like you got like little kid shows mm-hmm. coupled with like you know adult dramas. Yeah, it's like anime is all yeah. right here. Yeah. so like they have a and, very commitment. And, and it goes like anime goes down there's a rabbit hole right like anime spreads a lot more i i watch action based animes but there's dramas sports shows uh romances you name it it, there's an like you name a genre there's an anime for it they have horror uh animes all kind of uh death note is technically like a horror anime see i I you know that netflix movie that they made which I know one? you probably didn't like it, the Death, Death Note? Note one. Oh no, I never watched it. I don't know Death Note. I haven't uh, watched Death Note. Most of like the anime fans didn't like it because yeah. it wasn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? They changed it, things. Well, they took liberties. The problem was it was an entire show that went for like four or five seasons, pushed into a, not even a ninety-minute movie. Yeah, so I didn't rushed. mind it. I actually liked it. That was the first quote-unquote anime that I didn't mind. Mm. I mm. thought it was the premise is unreal. Yeah, like it's yeah. so cool. 
So cool. A lot of people, a lot of people just get thrown off because they're they're not a fan of animation in general, right? That's really yeah, that's just me. The, yeah, that's just kind of the thing, right? I love animation. I've always preferred animation. My go to is always animation. For a lot of times, I just have like a Pixar movie running in the background. You know, yeah. Just see, like I'm the opposite. Noise. I have like I, I love animation. I have like um. Uh, I don't know, like Interstellar on or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? And that's that's the throw off for a lot of people. But undeniably, anime, these shows, Attack on Titan is a prime example, or Naruto, have excellent stories. Their stories and character arcs are just phenomenal. Attack on Titan hits you in the feels. If you can get past, if, if you're a person like Drizzle, and you can get past that whole animation part of it and appreciate it for what it is, yo, they, I, I, I've said this before. Attack on Titan ha- almost had me had me welling up on two separate occasions, twice. Anime typically doesn't do that to me. I was I was legitimately like like getting teared up. It was it's an excellent show. I can't recommend it enough. Crunchyroll is like ten dollars a month, or you can get it for free with ads. Yeah, I, uh, I even I recommend it. If Look you that. like anime, go go, go get that. it. Look at so. that. Even if you don't like anime, yeah, join the dark side. Well. Um, looks like Onyx Equinox will come out of the newly formed Crunchyroll Studios, uh, a show on on Crunchyroll, which will be like the first show that comes out of this new yeah partnership. So we have um, I don't watch Dragon Ball, but we have Dragon Ball Super on Crunchyroll, but we don't have uh Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, or GT on Crunchyroll, and I believe it will it is on Funimation and will be. Yeah, so Crunchyroll. Well, Crunchyroll now it will have their own. It'll be Crunchyroll Studios. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Crunchyroll, they're yeah. gonna brand this yeah. thing. Yeah, absolutely, of course, because again, they have some dope originals. That's yeah. why. Yeah. If it was just like a platform for watching anime, whatever, fine. But they have their own shows. They yeah. have their own originals that are really good. So yeah. it, there's money to be made here. Yeah. Um. See, so continue. That's anime anarchy, baby. That is anime, <laughs> That's anime anarchy. anarchy. You like, I have so much to talk there about. Was, there was a lot. That there was, was a lot. That wasn't that long. That no, was like it was like fifteen minutes. Yeah, I thought that was gonna go. twelve like, minutes. Good for you, good job, good job, drip. I was worried that was gonna go way too long. Good yeah. job, drip. I'm happy with myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, pat on the back. Pat something, on the back. Something you never gave me, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> So let's talk. Let's talk movies. Let's talk you got movies. More? Huh? You got more? Do, Do I have movies? more? Yeah. I only talked about it a little bit. Oh, wow. Uh, I don't think we actually brought this up. So, so Warner Brothers does plan to release four DC movies per year, and two that will go right to HBO. Oh, we did. Yeah. We did talk about this because the riskier projects will go to. Yep, yep. Um, um, HBO. I wonder, I hear this a lot, I wonder when, because all of these studios, DC and Marvel most notably, are planning four or five years into the future, I wonder when this superhero thing is going to come to a crash and burn. I don't it's think it ever happen. will. No, I, I really, I don't think it will anymore. The Wild it's, West went on for quite a while, came but, to an end. Sci-fi, same thing, came to an end. Super no, 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 I don't end. think so. Because there's so many stories to tell and so many different ways to tell them. And, Movie theaters are going to survive on blockbuster films. And when do you make blockbuster films? Typically, it's just like a superhero film or As some a- action sci-fi film. Um, so I don't think I don't think superheroes are going anywhere anytime soon. It's gonna happen. Eventually. I don't think so. It, I, I it has to whether. Whether or not you're making them the same way as you are now, that's a different story. Whether you're like pulling from. You know, like changing the way that you make them, and maybe not blockbuster, you know, Avengers movies, but pulling Blade out, and making it like a horror movie. Like, I don't think it, that will ever stop. No, 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 not stop. But it won't be the main attraction forever. I don't, right I now, don't know. The MCU is like the main attraction, right? These are they're bringing in the most money, and it happened with Wild West movies, sci fi's. It, it happens. Yeah, but who can Wild Wild West movies. There's only so many stories you can tell, and like there's only so many Superman, so, superheroes. Ah, uh, see, I, I before we run out, it's to, before you have to do things like recast a million times. Before we have five different Captain Americas, eight different Hulks, nine different Tony Starks. I don't know, man. You, know you see what I'm saying? We're already at number what six for Batman. 
right? He, Patterson's like the sixth. You you see what six you see or where, seven? Yeah. yeah. You see where I'm going with this? It, general audiences are gonna get sick of that eventually. I we don't think so. We might not, and we might. We'll still get superhero movies. We still get sci-fi movies, but I don't think they're gonna be the main attraction. Not forever. I don't know. Uh, we'll I guess see. that's something we'll Only see. Only time will tell. It surely will. Um, but what else we got here? What else we got here? Oh, James Gunn's Suicide Squad confirmed to be rated R. Nice. Yes. Nice. Let's yes. go, baby. That's what's up. Studios really don't like that whole rated R thing, but Get I'm glad it. that they're they're gonna be get going forward with that. Suicide Squad. By the way, James Gunn. Why don't we get that trailer anytime soon now, huh? No, no. Huh? What, what, huh? What, what, no, it's gonna come soon because we just got a confirmed rating. Next step, trailer. It's coming. It's you know, coming. did you know trailers bones. get rated? And then, like, the movie gets so your separately. trailer could be rated PG, but you have a rated R movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah I could see that. Because like you dumb but it down show, to yeah. like put yeah. on but and like, get people the interested. What the movie itself will be rated? Yeah. Guess what? Chicken butt. I'm so happy. Ready Player Two is in the works. I like that movie. I liked Ready. Oh uh, yes. A lot, a lot of people found it mediocre. I liked it. I loved I, it. You know what it was? The major complaint I heard was people just. Uh, it was just like a. Like a nostalgia uh, overload, right? It was just, oh, well, remember him? Oh, look over there. There's that one. Oh, look over here. Here's that one. You know what I'm saying? That was the main complaint I heard. I like the movie. I'm a sucker for anything nostalgia. So when I the first time I saw Iron Giant, I lost it. I lost it. I grew up on that movie. I absolutely adore that movie. So when I saw him in Ready, Ready Player One, I lost my mind. And I love the pre- premise to begin with. I love movies of that sort where we take virtuality to a whole nother level, you know? Like, yo, that, I feel like that's how the life is going to turn into. Well, eventually in gaming, we should get something of the sort, yeah. Th- that, like, that's a game I would even love to play, Anybody right? would play that. You know what I mean? Yeah, that. Oh, my God. Anybody would play um, that. But I'm I'm super super excited about Ready Player Two, and I can't I can't say that enough. Uh, I really did love that. That's another that thing. First slowly film. but surely, uh, taking over the planet, gaming. Look, twenty years ago, the gamers were the minority. Nowadays, damn near everybody games. Give it another twenty eight years, I guarantee, literally everybody games. When things like that of that sort come around. Right now, you just can't deny it. Like God, I have to play this. Right? It's yeah. Gaming. That's where. That's where the money that any kids watching trying to decide what to do with your life. There it is. Just gave you your answer. Get into gaming. Ah, uh, I see what you did there. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Um, s- uh, Army of the Dead. Are you? Are you ex- do you want to see Army of the Dead? I yeah. can't remember. Yeah. Okay. Um, I like Army of the Dead. Yeah, so Army of the Dead, um, it wrapped up filming, and, you know, they, they even already have a prequel in the works, uh, an anime, anime. Um, they have two, it's a prequel, like, live action, mm-hmm. and then there's an anime, the anime based in the same world. Okay. Um, so, I just want to read a little excerpt from our friends over at Cinema Blend. Oh, by the way, Sean O'Connell will be joining us February 13th. Thir- well, there's the episode will air on fe- on Valentine's Day. Whoa. Right? Damn, That's Valentine's spicy Day. Spicy for you. Yeah, the 14th. Yeah. Yep. So February the episode 14th. Yep. How come all of our episodes always fall on a holiday? That happens often. It's so weird. We're on the weekend. Yeah, yeah but that that doesn't But holidays tip- like the big holidays uh, every holiday except Thanksgiving. No, no, no. Except um Christmas didn't either, I don't think. No, no, no. Like, there's a certain holiday that's only on, like, Tuesday. I can't remember which one it is. I believe but Martin Luther King. For, is for like the that. most of. No, no, no. It, it, ha- it would have it in its name. Um, oh. For the most part, like, next year, the 14th will be Monday, not Sunday. See what you're saying. So it, you everything yeah. shifts. See what you mean. Right? Okay. Yep. Uh, and then it keeps mean. going. So, like, seven years from now, then it will be Sunday again. Um, that's just how it works, and it's just continue revolving. But this year, next year, none of the, the we'll we'll miss every every. So it just happened to be this, this year. Yeah, okay. we got all the holidays, okay. but next I, year we'll miss them. I get it. But it's uh, it's very ironic that the fr- it's cool. Um, give you guys something. Give you a present. My birthday is coming up. Whoa, whoa. Um, March March six. We'll be recording on my birthday. Go up a month. I believe we're going to record on mine as well. Oh, nope. Mine falls on Tuesday. 
Where is it? Second. Groundhog oh. Day. Okay. Well, so... Oh, so that... Exactly a month before us? No. What? I was saying, we'll be recording... So the week of your birthday, we'll do a little special something. Oh, wow. Do a little special something. Yeah, a something, something. Some yeah. candles. <laughs> um, but the upcoming uh, Army of the day. Dead spent like... <laughs> Yeah, it's spent over. A, so this is an excerpt from Cinema Blend, our friends at Cinema Blend, uh, and Sean will be joining us on the fourteenth. To remember when he said in the show that he's gonna come back and kind of promote the book. Yes. This yeah. time he's okay. gonna come on. He's gonna read a chapter or something like that. Uh, Sean, read a couple I would pages. Like a book, man. Yeah. I would like one so I can yeah. read it. Yeah. I'll plug you all day. I'll plug that book all day. Yeah. Let me read it. Um, so this is it. After spending years in the DC Extended Universe, Zack Snyder's jumping back into the realm of zombies with his upcoming movie, Army of the Dead, which had spent over a decade in development hell. Fortunately for Snyder, the project finally moved forward when Netflix picked it up. And according to the Justice League filmmaker, the meeting during which the streaming service acquired Army of the Dead was pretty wild. So let's get into it. Because Army of the Dead was announced in 2008, a time when streaming was still in its like infancy, uh, originally the plan was for Warner Brothers to distribute the movie as a theatrical release. However, oh goddamn! However, according to Zack Snyder, um, the studio ultimately decided not to move forward with the project over either financial concerns or not taking it seriously enough. Um, years later, Snyder found himself at Netflix, uh, the office of Netflix, leading the following exchange as he recalled to EW. We were in a meeting at Netflix and I was talking about some of these scripts I was working on and I mentioned the idea to Netflix head of or original films, Scott Stuber. By the way, I uh, when I was reading this article a, a couple of days ago, I noticed that so the head of original films at Netflix, Scott Stuber. They just made a movie called Stuber. Yeah, they did. The Uber one with yeah. Drax. Yeah. Who's also yeah, in this did. movie. Yeah, they did. Well, Ooh. what a ploy on that, right? Ooh. You didn't just use your last name. Uh, Illuminati. So, the, so as I mentioned, the idea, and he was like, that's it. That's the movie. Go write that movie and let's make it. I was like, what do you mean, now? And he's like, Go write it tomorrow, and we'll do. Sh- we'll do. Oh, they mistyped this. Go write it tomorrow, and we'll shoot it in a week. What? Zach was like, What? Do you know who I am? That sounds like a horrible. I idea. take way too much time on what? everything, and so yeah, Snyder didn't even this in in the vault for quite some time. Yeah, so yeah. Snyder didn't even visit Netflix to necessarily pitch Army of the Dead. Yet they, they were like. Want it. Go make that. We'll shoot it in about a week. Don't worry. Write it. Get it done. We'll get everything ready. What? Netflix, you got some balls. They don't even care anymore. They're like, just go make that. Um, write it in a week. Let's go. We have no actors confirmed, yeah. but let's go make that. Yeah, it sounds about right. Can you, can, can you call on me, teacher? Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so Netflix is in... Netflix puts out some of the worst movies I have ever seen in my life. Yeah. Tall Girl, Stuber. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Stuber is not a Netflix original. Yes, it is. Is it? it no, is. no, no, it's not. It was went, no, it, uh, was, uh, it was released in theaters. I oh believe it was. shoot! Stuber was released in theaters. It's oh, not a yes, that, that old joke. No, yep, that old joke. <laughs> out the window. Out the window. <laughs> out the window. Just kidding. <laughs> Tall Girl, Kissing Booth, <laughs> Kissing Booth Part Two. Netflix is known for stinkers. So. Yeah. Army of the Dead seems like a breath of fresh air. Bright was a stinker. Bright was a great premise and an awesome idea and was poorly executed. Poorly. I liked it. Yeah? They, I may, love the they should be making a Bright too. You know, Bright was technically the first Netflix blockbuster. Yes. Yes, I did know that. That's why everybody yeah. watched it. And, and they're like, oh, it's not this cool. Is, this is from what I've heard from others say and from what I, I've noticed myself. Netflix... Their their kind of formula is they get they have a nice sized budget. Most of it goes to their their lead actor, your Will Smiths, your uh, Charlize Theron's, etc. Right, your Dave Batista's, etc. I and then would the not rest. classify him after with after those Gu- other two. After not not Will Smith, no. But after Guardians, Dave's up there. After yeah. Guardians, his price tag's hefty. 
after Guardians, he has a hefty price tag. Drax I, is a big for the for the seventeen lines he says each movie. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but those are big. Though. I'm telling you, he has a pretty price tag on him. I'm telling you. <laughs> Either way, Dave. Yes, I get what you mean, though. Will Will and Dave are on very different levels. Absolutely. Even Charlize is on a very different level than Dave. But it seems that Netflix put most of their money to their lead role, and then everything else kind of falls on the back burner, like their their effects, writing, etc. You see what I'm saying? They're, too much budget is going to talent, in other words. Yeah. You know? So I, I'm hoping Army of the Dead, Zach being the one making it, proves already that this shouldn't be the same kind of issue. Because at the very least, I can, know, I can say with confidence, Zach knows how to make a... a a horror movie a zombie movie in particular yeah yeah um i think he's gonna do great i really do and like i said this isn't just a one and done thing this i mean they have already army of the dead the prequel uh as well as the anime series that's going to be titled army of the dead lost vegas and they spelled it lost vegas not las vegas it's like play on words yeah um but the, so the the Army of the Dead film takes place in Vegas, so it's gonna be in that like desert desert central location. Yeah. Um, what's up? Chicken That's chicken. honestly, we just killed that wow. hour and ten minutes. Wow, That's murdered so rare. It. That's murdered so it. rare. We usually wow, murdered we usually, it. We usually drag on for quite a while. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, I had a good time too. Yeah. Yeah, I liked it too. I think again, I told you guys I was nervous about. Anime we can ch- we can talk for a couple minutes if you want. Yeah, we just kind of shoot the shit. Um, um <laughs> no, but I uh, who would have ever thought, right? We're just I've never, been, it. I've never been stooped before. This is the first time. This is murdered the first it. time I've been stooped while we were on camera. We've never yeah. done this. This murdered this it. This is different. This Let's is check different. that out. Um, maybe we should have invited Jack on today. <laughs> maybe a third voice would have helped. <laughs> yeah, he could have talked for a while or yeah, something. Jack, if Jack is good at anything, it's talking. Oh, my, my man God. can go. My man yeah, can go. Sometimes you have to stop my man from talking. Jack. <laughs> and we're trying to say goodbye on Zoom, right? And he'd be like, <laughs> like, after the episode or whatever, it's like, you know, we have a little talk on Zoom after before, you know, we wrap it up. And it's like, you try to be like, all right, yeah, I'm going to try to go. And he's like, yeah, and he's so, uh, tomorrow I'll see, you know, we'll talk about. I'm like, yeah, all right, all right, I'm going to go. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. like, you're probably Thursday. <laughs> I'm like, bro. Jack, you killed I was me. like, I, I always use this excuse. And when I say this line, you know I'm lying, but I'm really going to take him out. Yo, I'm you always uh, yourself up. Yeah, yeah, I don't care. Trade secrets. Still, you can't be like, no, I know you're. I'm always like, oh, I gotta take the dog out. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> you know, I say that too. Yeah, I know, because he says it to where'd, me. Where did I say Little bastard. <laughs> oh, I got, I got something for you, right? <laughs> okay, look. All right, so I, I can almost say with confidence this is fake, but I saw a video the other day of this rapper, right? And uh, he was like, yo, I just came from, I just, I went to, uh, I went to surgery. And I got my vocal cords replaced. Oh, I have now another I'm thing to talk about. And then he hit his tooth. He was like, watch this. Uh, 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 his tooth five times. And then he started singing. He's auto-tuned. I was like, bro. <laughs> bro. <laughs> so I started the video. And he has this big, uh, this ginormous band-aid on his neck, right? I was like, what the hell is that? Why is that there? Maybe he just got a new tattoo, right? He's a rapper. He gets neck tattoos and face tattoos, right? Yeah. Nah. He tells me he just had his vocal cords removed. So now he's auto-tuned. He taps his tooth five times. Yeah, that's now ridiculous. His voice is that's not real. It can't be, right? If it no. is, it blew my mind. Th- that would mean he has a wire in his tooth <laughs> yeah. going down. Through his um, jawline. So, but he got his vocal cords removed? It, it's... You could get on, one of I those, guess? but you could get one of those, like, you know, like the smoker things, like, ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. That, <laughs> I smoke, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that thing. You could get one of those and, like, but then again, it's not that. You wouldn't tap your tooth. That's, yeah, yeah. that's probably, Absurd. that's probably for show, hey, but he yeah. might have really did some he weird might, stuff yeah. to him. So, so. I, uh, so I was like, did you see the weekend? No. Bro. What do you mean? What do you you know what the you know who the weekend is yeah, right? Yeah, of course. I listen to him while I was Yo, there. homeboy got <laughs> homeboy got plastic surgery and looks like remember when Squidward? Wait, 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 wait. wait. Are you talking about a music video? No, he okay. le- in right, real okay. life. All right, okay. Like you saw a picture of him. 
Yeah. Okay. The, right. Yo, you t- you accept an award with the um. Yo, you haven't seen. Well, this? okay. I ask because. Like, okay, so what I've noticed, they say, I saw an article the other day, and they were like, why The weekend looks like he does in his latest music video? And like, his face is all swollen. Yeah, he accepts an award like this. This is like pure movie look. Yeah, so I'm pretty right? sure this is just a gimmick. No, it's not, bro. He, wait. Just wait. He had plastic surgery. He couldn't take, you, you really can't take the bandages off for a certain amount of time. Yeah. I think it's like uh, a week or so. Yeah. So he... I mean, he might have went outrageous with it yeah. a little bit. Um, oh my god, <laughs> this dude looks like Squid. Remember when Squidward gets handsome? <laughs> you remember that episode? Yeah. <laughs> that's what people are saying he looks like. <laughs> that's always that's like the go-to. Everybody says that. No, but Homeboy that's really funny. does. That's really funny. <laughs> oh, I'm wearing a SpongeBob sweater. By the way, that's look at his face. Reference. Yeah, that's exactly what I was referring to. So that this is I'm pretty sure this is the same No, you can see the scars. Yeah. He I'm literally sure this, did this dude, to I'm, himself. Guy, I'm almost so all right, no, listen, bro, I, listen to I, why. Listen to why. For the the past like his most recent album, right? Each one of his music music videos, it started with Heartless, Blinding Lights, and now this one. He has the same outfit on, right? And each one of the music videos, he's like beaten up more and more like the ending of the blinding lights video is like him in a major car crash and now it's this video where his face is all beaten up and and surgery on do you see where the gimmick is now i don't think this is real no he i think this is a gimmick for his music videos i don't know i don't think he legitimately did that to his face why would you accept an award like that because he's even wearing the outfit from the music videos it's uh, part, he's accepting a, an award. For I don't that. know, man. People are saying that's real. I I don't think it's real, people. I'm pretty. I'm almost positive it's a gimmick. Again, the suit is what really gives. See, that's the from the beginning where heartless. That's how he looked in heartless. Blinding lights. He looked like that. Now this is the most recent video. I don't it's know, the man. Same cost. You can see everyone. scars, like yeah, legit makeup. scars. It's Hollywood makeup. This man's worth millions. Of you dollars. okay? Big the weekend budget. startled fans when his face appeared bruised and bloody at the 2020 MTV Music yeah. Video Awards. Yeah. The VMAs August. are known. He for later doing wore silly gimmicks. He later wore a full face of bandages while attending the 2020 American Music Awards in November. So maybe it is a gimmick. Yeah, I'm the Toronto native debuted. I'm sure that's a gimmick. All right, Again, ready? The ready? The Toronto native debuted an extreme plastic surgery look during the music video for his new song, Save Your Tears. But is any of it real? Here's what we know. The 30-year-old showed off several bizarre new features in the visual for his latest single, including bloated cheeks, a thin nose, surgery scars, and seemingly injected lips. However, it seems a shocking change is the result of prosthetics. Yeah. But this is, yo. Know, if you go to tw- um, Big drip. if you go to Instagram, yeah, people are acting like he really did this to yeah. himself. Yeah, which, so look, I don't I follow get, this guy. I, I just I saw that and I was like, because he looks absurd. He, this is not like maybe in post to be able to put up a picture so they know what we're talking about. But he, he does. I don't see that happening at all. And I do keep up with the weekend because I love his music. And uh, Ben, I haven't heard Save Your Tears yet. But I've been up to date since uh, since he started this whole thing. Again, it's the suit that gave it away from me. Because, uh, first of all, it was first happening at the VMAs. VMAs are known for goofs and gaffs and, and you know, Papa Bless. Right? That The VMAs are known for that. Uh, like that guy from Danvers, The Weekday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that guy. It's <laughs> funny. A little uh, inside joke. Yep. You guys can't know. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get with the cool kids. Follow but yeah, okay, so maybe, make. yeah, maybe it's not real. All right. No. I, I'm actually glad it's not real because yeah. if you went out and made yourself look like that, it would be funny, though. Because it's not he, like he's a terrible-looking guy. When he debuted, everybody compared him to Michael Jackson. So if he really did do that to his face, I'd be like, damn, he really is Mike. He really is. He really is the second coming. You take that impersonation to a whole nother level now. My God. My God. You're going to put an arcade in your house next with a circus? Maybe a, Just don't a, go Don't go all the way the through with it. <laughs> don't go all the way through I'm with kidding. it. kidding. I love the weekend. Um, but yeah. So I guess we'll continue more of this on Black Label. Yeah. We are. Um, yeah. So check that out. An hour and 18 minute episode. Uh, we had a lot of fun. In but total. we got a whole 
45 minutes of spotlight coming up. Yeah. Uh, make sure you tune in for that. The video will be separate, but it is part of this episode. Thank you guys so much. We'll do all the outro stuff uh, in the next video, but make sure to subscribe to the channel. Ring that notification bell. It is handy. It does let you know when we upload new content, all that kind of new stuff, all that kind of good stuff. YouTube um, bad for a lot of things, but no reminding people. They're Spot on. Spot bad. on. Um, so make sure you subscribe. Ring that notification bell. Comment on all of our videos that you like. Interact with us. Get to know us. We're always here. We're always willing to talk and, and conversate and talk nerd stuff. And I know uh, Justice, he wants Thank you to you. call him ugly, handsome. I don't care. Whatever. He doesn't care. As long as you say hi, that's all he likes. I just want to talk to you. Yeah. That's all. Get us on social media. Yeah. If you have any pop recommendations. Culture 2020, we're on damn near everything. Pop Culture 2020 and or Pop Culture Corner 2020. That's Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, uh, Twitter, everything. You follow uh, me personally on anything. those same platforms at Big Drip and or Justice Holmes. For whatever reason, once again, on Twitter, I am at Drip Big. That's two eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could change that. I don't know how to. <laughs> yeah. We appreciate you, two beautiful people. You have a wonderful day. Make sure you are st stay tuned for, for Spotlight, Spotlight and uh, you know what? I'll, label. I'll have... Uh, thank you. See ya. See ya soon. <laughs> we do it for you. We do it for the culture. He's already gone.